All right, so now, let, now let's do the second approach. Let's do the APV approach and evaluate the same project. Okay, now, if finance is correct, we should get the same answer. We shouldn't be getting different answer, answers or conclusions uh, on the approach. You know, one shouldn't tell you proceed, the other telling you to decline. Um, but let's work it out. Okay, so the formula that we are looking at is as follows. Unlevered cash flow divided by one plus RU to the T. Now all of that really isn't necessary because it's a perpetuity. So we're just going to be dividing you uh, the unlevered cash flow by RU because okay? it's the same amount of a year. Uh, effects of debt, and this is essentially the tax yield minus the investment. So what's the unlevered cash flow? Uh, that we calculated up above of 84,000. Okay, so that was, remember, it was just uh, the 140 that was given adjusted for the 40% tax rate. Uh, what's the unlevered cost of equity? That was given as 20. Now, what are the effects of debt? The effects of debt is the tax yield. So it's going to be, um, I'll write this up here. This is tax yield. And this is equal to debt times the tax rate. Okay, so the debt is 116,667, and the tax rate is 40%. And then the investment was given as 440,000. So if we multiply all of that out, we're going to get the exact same answer as we did for the FTE approach. Okay, so that is exactly what we would hope to receive. Okay. What about the weighted average cost of capital approach, which is essentially the NPV approach? Okay. So again, we should get the same answer if done right. Okay, so first we need to calculate our weighted average cost of capital because we don't have that right now. Okay, I will calculate that using the formula um, as follows. So equity over the value of the firm times the cost of equity plus debt over the value of the firm times the cost of debt times one minus the tax rate. Okay, so equity, and this has all been calculated so far. So 350,000 was the equity. The value of the firm when we added the debt was 466,667 and the cost of equity that we had calculated was 22 percent and remember that was levered equity not unlevered uh, debt was 116.667 value remains as 466.667 cost of debt was given as 10 and one minus the tax rate was one minus 40 percent so this works out to 18 percent now, it's a simple calculation. Therefore, the weighted average cost of capital is going to be the unlevered cash flow, since it's a perpetuity, divided by the WAC minus the investment. Okay, so the unlevered cash flow was 84,000, which was the um, 140 after tax. We just calculated the WAC as uh, 18 and 440 was the investment that was given. So we work out as expected to 26667. Okay, so all three are the same. Now this one illustrates it the most if you look at it uh, because um, when it, remember when we did it as all equity, it wasn't profitable at 20%. But when you do this at 18%, it is profitable. So essentially what it's saying is that when you add some debt, you've lowered your hurdle rate, and now it makes the project uh, um, feasible to do. It's, uh, it wasn't profitable enough with an all equity valuation. Okay, so those are the three approaches um, that are different than the traditional NPV approach that's used in most textbooks.